There's an entire segment of diasporic African history that is completely overshadowed by the more popular narrative of the Atlantic slave trade. Undoubtedly, Afro-descended people came to the New World as enslaved individuals, doing domestic, agricultural, and other miscellaneous labor. However, there were many Africans who were conscripted in armies, helping to conquer and pacify the land for the Spanish crown. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the most popular black conquistadors in history. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. Also, stay tuned with word from my sponsors. Hello, my name is Howard Dorsey. I'm 54 years old. I'm here to talk about my uh, experience with herbal results. Um, I was getting sick, so I, I went to the doctor and they told me that um, my blood pressure was high, my cholesterol was borderline or high, so I was very sick. You know, I thought I was... Sometimes I thought I was dying at, at some point. And uh, I ordered a bottle of olive leaf extract. This is, this is how the bottle comes in. And within the first probably week and a half, two weeks, I checked my blood pressure and it was back down to normal. It was like 120 over 80. My cholesterol went down to uh, 125. You know, I definitely believe that olive leaf extract from Herbal Results saved my life. And I, that's real. I mean, I, I, I and I recommend it to everyone in my family, my friends, and we've seen a lot of results in that in that manner as well. Purchase now at HerbalResults.net. To begin, this video is not intended to be a celebration or applauded of this individual's life. The intent is simply to speak about a seldom discussed reality in diaspora history. Before the proliferation of enslaved Africans entering the New World, land throughout the Caribbean and the southern portions of the Americas had to be conquered. Popular culture would have us believe that Spanish men exclusively accomplished this task of conquest and exploration. However, that couldn't be further from the truth. There existed entire units of so-called black conquistadors who aided the Spanish conquest. Some accompanied them on explorative missions as well. Most of these African men were either conscripted soldiers or auxiliaries. Scholar Matthew Rustall puts it best. Wherever Spaniards set foot in the Americas as members of conquest companies, they were accompanied by black conquistadors. Seldom do we hear this narrative in popular culture, and I don't believe there's ever been a movie featuring a black conquistador. However, they most certainly were present. Some even acquired land and freedom in the process. This leads us to one of the most popular black conquistadors in history, Juan Garrido. Concerning the social status of Juan Garrido, one cannot be too sure. There are several sources that claim he was an enslaved soldier, and some either question or admit that standpoint. According to the sources, some Africans were able to acquire varying levels of agency due to the fact that the Americas had not been fully conquered or pacified in the 16th century as the discovery of the New World had only happened not much earlier. Thus, African men discovered diverse ways to establish maroon settlements, become pirates, or voluntarily join expeditions. These options, of course, weren't available in abundance, but they did exist. From the very onset of Spanish activity in the Americas, Africans were present both as voluntary expeditionaries and as involuntary colonists. Juan Garrido, the African conquistador, seems to have been a little of both, voluntary and involuntary. I'll explain. Initially, it seems as though Juan Garrido, an African born on the continent, was purchased by a Portuguese trader who took him to Lisbon. Juan eventually ended up with a man named Pedro Garrido. Pedro, upon hearing the potential wealth of the New World, may have taken Juan along with his own family to Santo Domingo, Cuba, and Puerto Rico. Interestingly enough, unlike most black conquistadors, we have the words of Juan Garrido himself. 
I became a Christian in Lisbon of my own will, spent seven years in Castile and landed in Santo Domingo, where I was for some time. From there, I ventured to San Juan de Puerto Rico, where I spent considerable time, afterwards landing in New Spain. Reflexively, Juan Garrido seems to suggest his independence and his voluntary movement. Based on his words, his social status isn't readily apparent. He seems to make it clear that he converted on his own free will, but that doesn't necessarily suggest his status in society. Regardless, Juan embraces the role of a conquistador. He had many military exploits in the Caribbean and Central America. According to him, he was there at the taking of Mexico City and claims that under Cortes, he was present in all the invasions and pacifications. Not only that, he helped to conquer Puerto Rico and Cuba. Based on his claims, he's essentially a Spanish war hero. And because of his many expeditions, he wrote a letter to Charles V of Spain for recognition. This letter is perhaps one of the earliest from an African man living in Mexico. I, Juan Garrido, black resident of this city, appear before your mercy and state that I am in need of making a probanza to the perpetuity of the king, a report on how I served your majesty in the conquest and pacification of this new Spain. From the time when the Marquez de Val entered it, and in his company, I was present at all the invasions and conquests and pacifications which were carried out, always with the said Marquez, all of which I did at my own expense without being given either salary or allotment of natives or anything else, as I am married and a resident of the city where I have always lived and also as I went with Marquez de Val to discover the islands which are in the part of the southern sea where there was much hunger and privation, and also as I went to discover and pacify the islands of San Juan de Boricuen de Puerto Rico, and also as I went on the pacification and conquest of the island of Cuba with the Adelantado Diego Velasquez, in all these ways for thirty years have I served and continue to serve your majesty, for these reasons stated above, do I petition your mercy. And also, because I was the first to have the inspiration to sow maize here in New Spain and to see if it took, I did this and experimented at my own expense. Juan Garrido ostensibly sought recognition and monetary gain from his contribution to Spanish civilization. Not only that, but he was an innovator bringing an entirely new food source to the new world. Based on his words, this man is nothing short of a legend. The most interesting thing about Juan Garrido's life is that he serves as a proxy for all the other black conquistadors who may have had similar experiences or outcomes. In other words, Juan Garrido is undoubtedly not the only one who contributed to the advancement of Spanish civilization in the New World. Another African comes to mind, a man named Juan Valenti an African conquistador who was granted an estate because of the central role he played in the conquest of Chile. Who are these men, who not only helped to conquer a territory for the Spanish crown, but were granted land in said regions and sometimes freedom? This aspect of diaspora history is quite different from the common narrative. There were thousands of black conquistadors during the conquest and pacification of the Americas by the Spanish. How is it that they have become so invisible? Alvarado's Africans, however, were neither the first nor last blacks to be brought down the Pacific coast of South America. During the 1530s, thousands of Africans accompanied the Spanish invaders of the greater Peruvian region as conquistadors and auxiliaries of various kinds. As scholars have noted, the historical record is remarkably silent on the roles of black conquistadors in Peru, yet their presence and large numbers are indisputable. If Juan Garrido's claim to have brought maize to Mexico is true, alongside his other military exploits, he's a clear example as to why we need to give more time and attention to the role of black conquistadors in the New World, so that they are included in the overall narrative. It's unreasonable to assume that these men were shipped back to Africa after their conscripted exploits. They lived and died in the places they conquered, or were sent to other regions that other black conquistadors helped to conquer. The Spanish crown would either give them their freedom or seek to keep them enslaved. 
Some received land and even the right to demand tribute and forced labor from native people, Juan Valenti documented by name as one of them. This gap of knowledge concerning the history of African people in the New World cannot go ignored or glossed over. Though it is a rather complicated history, largely due to our modern sensitivities, what we can do is try to understand it from the best historical lens available. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.